So fishing Holt Lake, how do you approach it? What, what's, the, what's the process? Um, number one, start at the dam. A bankhead dam, the, the dam that forms the above is Bankhead Lake or whatever. It's just dammed up portion of the Black Warrior River. I believe the Bankhead was the last of the original 17 dams, although the current dam has been greatly expanded and things like that it's it's you know it's, uh the second thing was fish some of these sunken dams there's one sunken dam down below about two miles or so below the main dam a lot of guys will drop shot live shad below that second dam that's been dynamited and everything and catch tons of spotted bass like that that's the second thing so it's structure based between that old dam and the new dam, quote unquote, it's just dead pan flat. There's hardly any structure at the bottom of the river. But if you really want to get a look of what the structure at the bottom of the river looks like, get back into, say, Blue Creek and get as far up as the creek as possible and see what the bottom of that creek looks like once you can get, you know, that's why I love that mud motor. I can get in water this skinny and still float and go along you see what the river bottom looks like well that's what the whole river bottom looks like is is what the shallow parts and a lot of those creeks look like it's dead it's just bedrock it's just in those cracks and crevices in the rock that the fish will hide and uh, mosquitoes are eating me up why I can drift almost any part of that that two mile stretch of river and catch bluegill like that off the bottom just drift it drift 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 the river bottom just drop shot with a slinky weight dragging along the river bottom just like the guys do below that you can fish the creeks there's lots of creeks there's davis creek pegasus creek there's blue creek there's there's a bunch of creeks that feed into in that section of the river on what they call holt lake it's just the black Oreo river <clears throat> i've never had all that much luck fishing back in the creeks i don't know why i just haven't it's just not really some people are good at it I don't. I think it's because a lot of those guys have trolling motors and they can, you got, they can stand up and be pitching and underhand and I don't, I'm not really set up that way. My rig is really best set up for drift fishing. I see tons of shad breaking on the surface back in those creeks, especially from the mouth of the creek on in about a quarter or so of a mile in, depending on the time of the day. You see shad breaking the surface all the time. Another thing is what I call shelf fishing. You know, the, the old river channel is deep. And at, when, when they dammed it up, it raised the water levels up and the old flooded shoreline is now underwater in some places. So what I would do is get on the Navionics and you type in Holt Lake. This is Holt Lake, Alabama. All right. This is I know there's other lakes called Holt Lake here in the United States, but talk about Holt Lake, Alabama. I call it shelf fishing. You're just fishing that shelf, basically a wind blown flat that's full of flooded timber uh, or what the old shoreline used to be. I, you can catch all kinds of fish there. There's another one, the old lock 15. A lot of people catch fish there, although I've never, I've never, I don't really ever fish down that far into the lake. Uh, there's another place called Deerlick Creek, same thing. So you can fish the creek or you can fish the shelf at the mouth of the creek. Uh, Rocky Branch is the same thing. There's a big creek called Pegasus Creek, it's the biggest creek on the Black Warrior. Hardly ever get down that far, but I mean on the, um, on the Holt Lake portion of the Black Warrior River, hardly get down that far. There's a lot of coves on that lake where they call it a branch or they call it a it's not really a creek it's just a part where the it's again part of the sort of the flooded shoreline that foves, forms a little cove that would be great for some bluegill fishing it'd be perfect for fly fishing if i were a fly fisherman i would concentrate on those 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 coves casting back into those coves and retrieving that's sort of the upper half of it but the whole lake is pretty much stove pan like that uh, the, the 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 main structure I've tried to fish the structure where the main shelf kind of j drops down into the new the the new the shelf drops down into the old river channel I mean that's classic stuff but again I don't have 
a Navionics GPS to ch to chart that and do and like guys do with these spot locking trolling motors and GPS guided trolling motors where they can troll that I just don't have that kind of precise control when I fish I'm gonna fish when I drift I'm using the natural wind and current to blow me along and I just have to pick my spot that I'm gonna fish usually a half a mile I may get up a mile ahead of that and then set up on a drift I'm gonna drift that one half a mile and then drift below it get back and reset and and, 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 and just make multiple passes because I'm only fishing generally with one line as opposed to eight lines or 16 like the crappie fishermen do unless I'm jug fishing now on the last show when I was just exploring the river, I saw tons and tons and tons of shad breaking down there by Pegasus Creek. Tons of shad fishing up on the sh up on that shelf that I was talking about, leading into Pegasus Creek. And I'm probably going to do a jug fishing uh, trip there, just because it's like my goodness. I mean, the, the shad may not be there when I get back, but and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, that's where we need to be fishing because I know it's shallower there. I know those shad have an easy escape down to the deeper water in the old river channel and there's plenty of food and plankton and stuff on that shelf for those shad to feed on and guess what those big cats and those big stripers are going to follow them right into there and those big bass you know as someone who doesn't use sonar or anything like that I essentially fish structure and fish shallower so number one stick to the dams Stick to the main dam below Bankhead. Fish that thoroughly. Learn that. Two, target all the fl the dynamited flooded old dams and fish those thoroughly. Three, fish the creek mouths thoroughly. And four, fish the shelves where the where the main the old river channel comes out and it forms a shelf of old, all that flooded shoreline. In some cases, flooded timber. The number one thing too is just cruise along until you start finding shad breaking on the surface and that's where you drop your jugs or that's why I'll let out some line behind the boat and start drifting and seeing what we can catch. I follow that same principle even on the lower Black Warrior where it's much much shallower and it's all sandy and essentially the river is at that portion is essentially within its original banks. I just ride upstream or downstream until I begin to see shad breaking and that's where I drop my jugs and that's where I catch fish.